Hey, beautiful people. I hope you're having a great start to your day and, and wishing you a fabulous, fabulous, uh, amazing day today. And uh, something really, really important that came up uh, that I really want to speak into this morning um, in terms of what our kids need most from us. This is one of those things. And if you're having some challenges with your child, either in communicating, good morning, good morning, lovely to have you on here. Um, if you're having some challenges perhaps with your child or you're finding that communication um, is a little bit challenging between you both, um, or perhaps uh, there's just some stuff going on that you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so reactive or I feel so frustrated. The number one thing that your child needs most from you is for you to love you. Now, bear with me, let me break this down a little bit further. When your child feels emotionally responsible for how you feel, then that creates a lot of insecurity, it creates a lot of challenges coming up in your relationship. And often what can actually happen is if we derive our sense of lovability, if we derive our sense of who we are and our value in the world and our worthiness and all of those things, we're often looking for that outside of ourself. And often we can place that responsibility on our kids and be thinking they need to love me, they need to appreciate me, they should value me, they need to respect me more. And the second that we do that, we're actually putting a burden upon them and it trips up the relationship uh, one uh, you know there can be three different things that kind of play out from this certain dynamic when you are not loving you when you are not valuing you and when you're placing your need for love above your self-love um, it gets in the way of our parenting and it gets in the way of our parenting and that we may not be consistent uh, we may bend the rules or, or uh, you know do things because we're looking for approval or we're we're looking to please our children or we're looking to keep our children happy. And the moment that you do that, you place a, a huge burden, a huge responsibility on them because now anytime that they're not happy, you will blame yourself. You will, you know, start to think, oh my gosh, you know, it was something that I did wrong. It goes into the parenting shame that sometimes that we can feel. And if our kids aren't happy or if they aren't perhaps doing well, sometimes we tend to take that really personally and think that it's all about us instead of actually becoming present and becoming even more available for our child and getting curious on what's really going on for them at the deeper level. Self-love is your greatest gift that you can give to your child simply because it keeps you emotionally stable and consistent. That is what your child really needs because then they feel safe to explore who they are. They feel safe to um, explore the boundaries, to push the boundaries, to be who they need to be in any given moment. And I have a saying, when I love me, I set everybody else free because I'm no longer requiring other people to show up or to act in a certain way in order to keep me happy. Because if we're doing that, we also have the the other belief of that flip side is that other people, um, you know, or oh, I need to show up to keep other people happy. And it creates this weird, funky energy that totally impacts the way that we can communicate. So the three biggest things that I see that show up in relationship, particularly with kids, but this can also be intimate relationship, is when somebody feels emotionally responsible for how you feel. So in terms of they think that they need to make you happy or they need to please you or they need your approval, um, all of those things, your child will feel A, controlled by you or feel trapped or feel burdened. Um, your child may uh, withdraw or become sullen and not be able to communicate effectively with you because anything they say, if that's a trigger for you, if you haven't done self-healing work, if that's a trigger for you, then they're going to feel immediately shut down and immediately invalidated with what they're currently experiencing. And um, bless the wisdom of my mum. She always used to say, if you cannot listen to the small things, they will not tell you the big things. Uh, and so all this time, you know, we're building trust within a relationship. But trust cannot occur if um, it's built on unstable ground, if it's built on, on rocky ground. And when we're not loving ourselves, often we're emotionally up and down like a roller coaster. We lose stability depending on what's showing up in the world and what uh, how we're choosing or how we're 
unconsciously reacting to those situations by what we're making those situations mean. And then the child comes home, they've had a tough day, and next minute we find ourselves, you know, yelling and screaming because the child's not communicated in a way that's pleased us or made us feel happy or added to our sense of worth or sense of self value. So all of these things are absolutely imperative because, uh, like I said, so if you're finding that your child is feeling like is is sullen and withdrawn, um, or is overly anxious that can be the other thing because if you know like if we're not loving ourselves if we're scared um, to put ourselves out there or not being fully authentic or perhaps we're critical of ourselves therefore we're projecting criticism on others that's going to again break down that level of trust that level of security that level of stability that your child is wanting to experience each day in that solid platform to really explore who they are to push the boundaries um, to figure out you know what's true or what's right for them the the other thing is um your child may be overly anxious um, so they're picking up on your fears your concerns your worries in the world as well hey lisa great to have you on hey erica lovely to see you on here too so all of these things are so 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 important guys in terms of really loving yourself at the deepest level in order to create such a stable platform so your child can come and you're not going to go into a wobble if they're having a bad day if they're upset if they don't think something's fair or there's something else going on there you can remain so stable and consistent and uh <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> i can totally appreciate that darling and uh you know giving them that really good role model because again like if we're loving ourselves, we're not going to you know tolerate um Im improper behavior we're not going to tolerate and that's not meaning that we're going to rant and rave and yell and scream or anything else it's the ability to be able to draw that loving compassionate line in the sand and say hey what's going on for you because what's actually happening right now is actually not okay um so what are you experiencing what do you need support with what do you need help with rather than you know yelling and screaming and suddenly now we've got um you know a whole bunch of separation a whole bunch of miscommunication actually happening so the more that you love yourself you demonstrate to your child what that actually looks like now that sets them up for life in terms of having healthy relationships in terms of drawing healthy boundaries with others and really Really, like boundaries aren't like this big massive fence boundaries are actually knowing what are my preferences what is right for me what is okay for me um, and being able to articulate and communicate those clearly with those around us so you're demonstrating all of those things when we love ourselves, we're obviously taking care of our physical body. So you're building that into, you know, their system now of, hey, when you love yourself, when you value yourself, this is how I show up. This is how I respect my things. And often, you know, um, it, it's a greater indicator of, you know, them doing the things, not you telling them to do the things because they should, but them actually valuing and loving themselves and everything becoming a self-expression from there. They become more self-responsible adults when they love themselves. And when they're getting that role modeled from you, that is one of the most valuable gifts that you can give them. But the most important thing is that emotional burden that I originally spoke about. When a child feels that, um, that your emotional well-being rests on their shoulders that is a huge weight to carry and often leads into them living uh, greater codependency um, in relationships as well so either over giving over compensating over fixing feeling responsible feeling guilty if somebody's not happy there's a whole bunch of stuff that plays out hey Buffy great to have you on here um, there's a whole lot that plays out within this when you are not valuing loving and respecting yourself first and then when we do that for ourselves, we attract that from others as well. So often that can also be a great indicator as well. And that's not to say that, you know, we're not all human. We're not all going to have those human wobbles. Of course, we're all human. We're going to have those human wobbles. But the more that you love you, the more that you value, you respect you, you appreciate you, then the less you need that externally, which means the more you just genuinely get to attract that into your life. You get to have those conversations with your child that are a self-expression of that and therefore they learn 
how to actually do that for themselves, A, with their friends, B, they learn how to follow their own heart and have the courage to do so because they've got their own back. They're no longer abandoning themselves. Just the same as when you love you, you're not abandoning yourself in order to please others, to keep others happy, all of those things. And that's not to say that we totally disregard the impact that we have on others. Of course, we want to communicate compassionately, but you can do so from a much more stable, consistent platform when you're stable and consistent within yourself simply because you're valuing you, you're loving you. So I truly hope that that has served. And uh, in terms of how to actually love yourself, that was one of my biggest blocks. Like I literally got to 32 and I realized I had no clue on how to love myself because often we're taught that external validation so needing that love or that approval from others, otherwise we feel insecure within ourselves. Now, particularly if you are a sensitive or highly sensitive person, you will be much more acutely attuned to the needs of others around you. And the other thing is when you're experiencing um, perhaps, you know, what's going on for them, there can be that need or that want internally to try and fix things or make things better so you get to feel better. Uh, but there's some very, very clear things around this that you can actually do in order to um, to feel um, much more relaxed or calm regardless of what's going on for others around you. Self-love is one of those things and it's not just a whole bunch of I love myself, you're a beautiful person. It's not you know just empty affirmations or anything else. It's real concrete actions. It's feeling the feeling internally um, and uh, this is a whole bunch of like what I am most passionate about because when every woman knows their true worth on earth they know their gifts and they know that unique and vital role that they play in the place of humanity that is a gift that we get to give onwards to our children and we get to heal the generational issues and uh, all the lineage stuff and I truly believe that um, certainly as a woman and I can't speak from a man's perspective of course um, but certainly as a woman in today's world I think our greatest responsibility is to be a circuit breaker for all the generational all the lineage stuff that's kind of gone on that wounding from the past that's been brought forward the patterning from the past that is no longer served and it's time for us to stand in our truth stand in our power and stand in our self-love and our self-worth to be able to express and share our light and love with the world in a much much higher way and play that unique and vital part that you were born for, that you are here to bring into humanity, that you are here to serve uh, in this lifetime. So uh, that, I truly believe, is our greatest gift when we know our own worth. You're not running around trying to prove anything. You're not trying to please people. You're shifting completely into a new paradigm where you get to show up and fully unapologetically be you. And that is the greatest gift that we can pass on to our children. Have an amazing day. Loads of love. Hey, Diana, great to have you on, darling. Loads of love to you all. So much gratitude for tuning in. If this has served you or helped you in some way, shape or form, uh, please like, love or share it with those that you love and care about around you. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.